So I'll be talking about neck length and its relevance in intercapsular fractures. So femoral neck fractures, they are still one of the leading causes of mortality and morbidity in older group of patients and a lot of morbidity even in younger patients if not treated well. So uh, whatever method you choose, whether you choose a fixation, whether you choose a replacement, the mortality still remains quite good in, in these cases. So it's very important to uh, know uh, the risk factors and whether uh, fixation methods so that we can sort of reduce this mortality. So osteoporosis is one of the leading causes of neck femur fractures and bone mineral density is one of the important predictors, although not a very highly accurate predictor, but an important predictor for uh, detecting osteoporosis. In spite of so many algorithms, protocols, um, things, criteria and all that, we still are not able to predict this risk because and the, uh, generally these patients, they remain asymptomatic till they get a fracture. So uh, it is difficult to predict a fracture in a routine way. There have been attempts at uh, trying to segregate these risks by doing proximal femoral geometry assessment. So uh, it is being considered that it may be a risk factor for osteoporotic hip fractures and the geometry of them. So uh, we have these things criteria about, and generally we have seen that towards the upper end of the neck, the osteoporosis starts, and this is, these are the fractures of, uh, when, where the fracture actually starts is in the upper uh, end of the neck. So uh, there are several papers, in fact, uh, after this topic was given to me, I went through a lot of literature, because I even myself didn't know much about this aspect of femoral neck. Uh, but they are all very, um, very vague articles. Nothing is very clear and nothing is very accurate being mentioned in this. So it started long back when they said that there is a very great relevance of proximal femoral geometry to neck femur. So uh, I went through the literature and several studies are there. The earlier studies, they all say that Neck, uh, neck length is an important predictor of neck fracture, um, uh, hip geometry, but all of them, as I told you, show in, inconsistency. So neck length was actually smaller in the fracture group. There are studies which I initially said that they said the neck length was smaller in the fracture group, and but CT uh, comparison reported that short, uh, also it was shorter in the fracture group. But all these assessments as we went ahead in the literature towards the present uh, this uh, time, uh, it has been sort of uh, uh, neutralized that it actually doesn't really hold true. So in general, uh, now it is said that it is the full hip axis length which is more important predictor of fracture than a pure neck length. So uh, wider necks, as the osteoporosis develops, thinning of the cortex, wider neck and uh, angle of the neck shaft angle probably may be more important predictor of this fracture. So what is important is that uh, the hip axis length, which is from the pelvic brim to the lateral, uh, just below the vastus lateralis tubercle, that length is what is called as hip axis length. Uh, that is more important predictor rather than the pure femoral neck length, which starts from the femoral head to the lateral part of the uh, trochanter. So there are studies now which are saying that this uh, indicator, but again, this is all subjective. They say that in different positions of assessment, the x-rays, there is there's no very accurate and perfect method of taking an x-ray. So every x-ray technician does it his own way. And to assess these parameters on uh, these x-rays to con compare them is a difficult thing. So uh, neck length is uh, what I saw, it is position sensitive. So generally for an assessment, for screening purpose, we might be taking x-rays in internal rotation, keeping both, as if you know, the technician takes the x-ray in that position. But when there is a fracture patient, the, uh, the patient keeps it in the more comfortable position, so it may be externally rotated position. So probably the length cannot be comparable to the normal limb, so assessment of this parameter may not be very uh, accurate, so it is all position sensitive. 
So it has been seen in different positions that neck length and edge length on, um, changes in parameters created by external rotation or abduction. So it is in different, in different degrees of abduction and external rotation, the neck length also may vary. How much that actually comes to when the mode of injury happens? So what is the position of the neck which causes more fracture? That may be an important parameter, but it's a very difficult parameter to, uh, uh, to measure at the time of injury. So but it is position sensitive, so a very difficult parameter to compare. So present studies, as I told you, as we are moving towards the present literature, it is showing that the neck was narrower in the intercapsular fractures and it is longer in the intercapsular fractures. So anthropologically, as we progress, as the human beings evolve more, we are taller, we are heav heavier, so the neck length also is increasing, so probably we'll have more intracapsular fractures as compared to trochanteric fractures. So uh, that probably, the parameters are probably pointing to that. So the hip axis length and neck shaft angle predicted fracture in independently of BMD. So what I finally wish to tell you is that hip axis length and the neck shaft angle probably are more important parameters as compared to isolated neck length, which we probably has no relevance to the susceptibility to the fractures. So, so if you can see this uh, paper, there is 250 patients and 190 patients with different angles of neck shaft angles. They could see that in these trochanteric fractures, it was 127 and in neck femur, it was 133. So there's a definite bias towards higher neck shaft angle, what also called as CCD angle in case of intracapsular fractures. So different, uh, how do you extrapolate this to fixation methods? So different uh, fixation techniques probably uh, would point to this in that uh, whether the position of the implant, so a three cannulated cancellous screws as compared to a present generation FNS or a DHS would probably lead to more loading of the lateral cortex and cause earlier failures. So uh, I wanted to sort of put it in perspective because um, I could not find a clinical relevance of this um, in the literature to us as surgeons. So what importance I could get out of it, like in a basic cervical fracture, if you try to put the present generation implant, which is less than 75 or 80 millimeters um, in the neck length, if the neck length is smaller than 80 millimeters, probably you will not be able to do a FNS so you might have to do a different implant. So that becomes very relevant. So whenever you do a, a neck femur, you have a basic cervical, try to assess on a CT scan the neck length, and if it is less than 80 millimeters, probably you will not be able to do, you will probably end up doing uh, something like this, which high chances of failure. So probably that relevance probably is very important in this case. So similarly, if you extrapolate into a IT fracture, basic cervical fractures, again, the length, and the position of your screws in, so your increase in length, so your whatever Parker ratio, whatever. So if you put it in the inferior quadrant and the posterior quadrant, that is probably more acceptable than even the conventionally accepted central position. So that in those perspective, it becomes very important. So then a little more about the offset. So uh, horizontal offset and the vertical offset becomes again important as far as neck length is concerned. So even for a, Suppose you want to do a hemiorthoplasty or a total hip replacement. So to restore that offset both vertically and to the native offset would be more important, uh, relevant. So in fact, it has been now being pr promoted that you should get a little bit more offset, horizontal offset than the uh, native offset and give, it gives more stability and more painlessness to the hip uh, as compared to the restoring the normal offset. So that's all I have to say. Uh, so you need to assess the length preoperatively. That is very important. You Whether you do a CT scan or an X-ray in a good position so that you can see the maximum length of the neck in the preoperative X-ray becomes very important in such things. Thank you very much. So